Hey folks, this is IOE throwing we're back with some more World of Tanks. As you can see, this is Biop and his Cromwell B. This is a tier 6 skirmish game on mines. And um, this should be a lot of fun. So of course you don't I don't need to tell you how to kill a Cromwell. Everything in this game should be able to pen a Cromwell quite easily. So this is just gonna be a, a game of skill and speed versus not skill and speed, basically. Because there is no crumbles and only two, well, I don't know if I call a T-37 fast. So I was going to say two fast tanks on the enemy team. So really one fast tank on the enemy team and one meh. So before we get started, as always, if you think this deserves an MVP, please hit that like button. If you think I deserve subscribers, please share this. And all things thank the Patreons because this game is about to get kick off right about now as we start seeing enemy tanks pouring into this region. Now, oops, um, in skirmishes, ooh, that was almost bad. Um, he still, <laughs> I thought for a second he was going to reverse up the hill. Um, in skirmishes, it's really important on mines to control this area. If you can control this area, you can win the game. Uh, managing to dodge the artillery show. Uh, I don't like the fact that he was auto-aimed. Um, he, could, he may have been able to hit that last shell had he not been auto-aimed. The auto-aim is actually just going to uh, be a problem for him. As all these shots are definitely things he can aim himself. Um, but it does make it nice when zipping in and out of cover to not have to worry about necessarily making sure you're always on target. The, the problem, like, I mean, it's one thing shooting the side of a... Oh, that was bad. Um, the side of a um, an M6, it's completely different if you're shooting at the front of anything. Uh, and the, the thing about shooting at the side uh, of anything is that if it moves back and forth while you're moving back and forth, that can really throw the auto aim off. So be careful with it, okay? But so far they've done really well. It looks like he's trying to go for the snipe on the T-64 and then gives up with their team flooding in they're going to take out artillery anyway who's back here and try and push up here unfortunately though the enemy team has done really well and I didn't notice that uh, they actually have been focusing their fire and taking us down now um, these two guys are going to be great if they can get into some cover provide supporting fire and Biop is going to have to lure them off this he's going to have to dive off this cliff after luring them around this corner and his friendlies are going to have to chew them up. The problem with this strategy is going to be that uh, it, all it takes is a Type 64 to realize, oh guys, we're all parading into death. And then he goes this way and he'll come down here and you'll go sit on the cap. Because at this point in time we have swapped sides and if that Type 64 does the intelligent thing and goes and sits on our cap, it's going to be a struggle trying to push through their entire team just to get him off that cap. Um, and he, there's enough bushes around that cap that he can go next to invisible pretty fast, pretty easily. So we're going to have to see what these guys do. And if they're dumb enough to play right into our hero's hands, hero jumps off the cliff. Wait, did they move the rock? There used to be a rock here. They apparently moved it. Um, usually great at catching people falling off this cliff and just uh, turning a per you know an obvious easy little fall down a cliff into certain death. Oh look, there's still a rock there. Uh, so apparently they haven't figured out that this is a silly thing. They're actually shooting back and winning the firefight with our allies. Now, this is a serious problem and Biop is actually going to have to get un up un under this cliff and try and spot some people. But he doesn't get any lights, which means they have moved away from this edge of the cliff. Um, he's pushing up. Now, he can't go around this corner and find all of them because they will kill him. Um, they, Assuming they all shoot at him. One of his guys, either by being ordered to or just... Uh, through his own wish and figured out needs to be on the cap. Good plan. That is going to pull at least some of them over in this direction. 
Now they're all one shot, so some HE being loaded now would not be a horrible thing. Um, some of them are down to literally four health. That is not one of them, and look at that. As if reading my mind, Chris uh, has in fact got HE loaded up, and Biop is running for his life. He does get down into cover. The other Cromwell is also in cover. Oh, that's a T37. I don't like that auto aim. That particular auto aim was a bad one. Uh, it worked at well for. This is again not. So Biop is relying really heavily on this auto aim. The problem with that is that, especially when things are moving across your line of vision at speed, um, there's more likely you're going to miss. And that T37 kill would have been faster had he just aimed it and not hit the auto aim. Because as soon as you hit the auto aim, it resets the aiming for half a second. And so before it begins to contract again. So if he just aimed it like that shot, then he would have done better with that T37. It doesn't really matter because the T37 didn't shoot him a second time, but those extra few seconds would have been nice. So spinning around, he was uh, thinking about coming around, seeing over here, uh, decided against it, and it's the right choice. He really does need to be up near these bushes. And he does need to be careful pushing up near into these bushes. He also needs to be careful showing his back end out for no good reason. Um, because as he pushes up into these bushes, sometimes you can get lit. And that would just be unfortunate. So he's doing these weird little circles. He's trying to see if he gets lit and then he, he's going to fall away again. And that's why he's doing this. He wants to see if they're here by them spotting him. Because he doesn't think he's going to be able to spot them. Uh, and unfortunately, his friend, Chris, is in a really horrible spot. And he's down and up against some of these houses. He can't do anything from that location except stay there and hope nobody comes around and finds him. Now if his gun is pointed in the right direction and this Type 64 pops up around the corner, then Chris is going to be okay. He should be able to kill the Type 64 before it kills him. However, if it's that T-34A5 that's still on 30, 300 health or whatever that pops up around that corner, it doesn't matter which way Chris's gun is pointed. He's going to die. Assuming the T-34 doesn't bounce. Um, because assuming Chris is paying attention and he pops up on the right side, Chris gets one shot into him. It's not going to do 300 damage. Unless it amorex him, which it probably won't. Yeah. No, not even that. As it turns out, he's not on 300 health. But um, Chris must have made a move. And in so doing so, he dies. Um, I don't know if we got lucky or just really, really good at the end there. I'm not quite certain exactly what happened with Chris, but he must have moved out of cover. He died right over there. Yeah, he was he was on his way out of cover from behind the second house and got sniped from the hill. Um, and that's just unfortunate for him. Uh, I think these two were trying to time their moves together. And Chris just moved a couple seconds early, which in the long run is uh, saved by Up's life, but maybe it was not the plan. It doesn't really matter what the plan was. This was a clutch carry, and well done overall by Up. Great job. We're going to jump over and see what your um, post game results are. As soon as I remember what buttons to push. Now, unfortunately, because this is a skirmish, he doesn't get any kind of rewards for it. Um, but that's just how the skirmishes go. He does, however, earn a ton of cash and experience for this. Good job. <laughs> 2,400 damage dealt. Oof. Nice, nicely done. Um, and then, of course, you got to give props to T-34 on the enemy team, who did 1,700 and unfortunately was not able to clutch that win at first team because Bayop just walked all over him at the end there. 1400 experience earned in a tier 6 game <laughs> this is definitely worth it oh I wish you'd been running some premium right there right that would have been a much better result with a little bit of premium sp sprinkled in and look at that he blocked just enough damage that he was able to survive no actually wait he may have been able to survive with taking that but not much more than that 
as he was just like at the 130 mark himself, right? At the end there. Well done, sir. Um, great job circling back and coming in behind them. They definitely didn't expect that. And that was a, a good move to help win the game. So again, if you guys think that this deserves an MVP, then please hit that like button. If you think I deserve more subscribers, please share this. And all things, please help thank the patrons for they are awesome. And I'll see you all next time. This is IOE throughout.